So I'm convinced my wife is obsessed with her ex-boyfriend. Still, after years of being separated and guys, this man treated her like garbage. He was toxic to her, he cheated on her, he was abusive, and yet she still keeps bringing him up. Our 20-hour flight to Thailand for our honeymoon, she talked about him for 19 hours straight, and I'm sick of it. And you know what? I might have found out something just now, and it all makes sense. Hey, I'm Sean, and I'm 27 years old. I'm a man. I'm writing this because I've been having major, uh, serious problems with Sophia, my wife. Since we got married a year back, and I always had my doubts that she was not completely over her toxic ex-boyfriend, Sam, but everything that's been happening lately has confirmed all my doubts in the worst way possible, and it's a lot for me to process. I just found out that she's cheating on me, but she has no idea that I know. I'll start at the beginning for some context so you can understand just how ridiculous, unfaithful, and toxic Sophia has been. We got married almost a year ago after having dated for a year and a half. We decided to live in Sophia's hometown of Boston after the marriage because she said that it was really important for her to stay close to family and I was okay with it. So, everything was going swell until we wanted to go to our honeymoon. Right from the get-go, we got on the flight, we began to get into some vulnerable conversations about our past, and while I talked about my hometown and family, the other thing Sophia talked about was Sam. It was a 20-hour long flight, and she went on rambling about her relationship with Sam for almost the entire duration. At first, I didn't think much of it, since we also briefly talked about some other things, and I was really excited about our honeymoon. So, once we reached Thailand... At first, um, she was also excited. Gradually, she started talking about him again. And if I'm being honest, I was starting to get really annoyed and tired of listening about him, so much to the point that I still ignored it. And then came to the moment when I realized just how truly stuck up Sophia was on Sam. We were sitting by a nice beach in a cafe when she started to admit the beauty of the sea. She was admiring it. She said that she felt so happy sitting there with me, even though she had always imagined doing all of this with Sam, and that she even had the venues and honeymoon destination decided, not to mention the cute kids' names she had saved for their first future child. I began to get extremely uncomfortable because I felt really bad and confused, but still I was trying my best to console her so that she would not ruin her trip. But still, she went on and on about him and how they had so many plans for the future. I could tell that she was enjoying talking about him. You know, Sam, more than our own honeymoon. This was the one time when I realized that she was way too deep in her memories about Sam, even though he was really, really bad to her. He cheated on Sophia multiple times with so many women for years until she finally caught him red-handed. This was when they have been living together. And he had been bringing women into her house on the regular. That's how bad of a person he was. And Sophia was so obsessed over him, like a crazy person after two years, especially now that she was newly married. I don't know, guys. I felt extremely uncomfortable that day after seeing how toxic what Sophia was doing was. But I still let it slide. As the trip came to an end, her uh, eagerness to go back to Boston was increasing, and I did not quite understand that because usually people want to stay for longer and not go back, it was really strange. Even after we came back, all the things that I expected my honeymoon period to look like was not there in the least. She spent most of her time on the phone, and all of the other time, it was just very normal routine stuff that we were doing. I began to question whether it was a mistake getting married to her because she was acting very weird and distant. And oh, by the way, the conversation about Sam still didn't stop. They had just reduced a little... Uh, after this, I got too busy with work, and I had gotten used to our routine. It was not all bad, other than the constant mentions of Sam, especially whenever we had a fight. She used to begin comparing me with him, which was just ridiculous. Almost a year passed by, um, like this, and my suspicions towards her were growing. Until something happened just a few days back. It was midnight, and I've been working late, so Sophia was already asleep when I got into bed, just... As I was about to fall asleep, her phone starts ringing constantly like a lot of messages were being sent to her altogether. And because I was already doubtful for so long, I desperately needed some answers to all of this. So, I picked up her phone carefully while she was asleep and I opened up her text messages, you know. 
Yep, I did it. I opened up her text, and I could not believe what I was actually seeing. It was like all of my worst fears and doubts have just been proven to be true. The messages were from Sam, and she was still talking to him. There were so many texts that dated back so long ago, and some even as old as when he got married and had started dating. It was all not normal, harmless texts they had sent each other either. It was uh, inappropriate images that they were talking about every single thing that they were doing each day, including Sophia telling him about her flight, to which he had replied things like, I would never treat you that way. Yeah, because he would treat her a lot worse. And not just texts, they had also been seeing each other on the reg. My anger was on another level because now it all started to make sense. Why she always was on the phone, where all the comments about comparing me to Sam were coming from, and also why she wanted to stay in Boston. It wasn't because of her parents, those were all just white-faced lies. She wanted to stay because of Sam. Can you believe this woman, folks? She made such a big life decision for which I had to change jobs and make such a big move to a whole other state just because she was still stuck up on her ex. I was burning with anger. She was not just being unfaithful and disloyal, but also delusional, selfish, and mature. Now, I understand why she was so disinterested in our honeymoon and wanted to come back to Boston as soon as possible. Things were a lot worse than I could have imagined. I mean, I just thought that she was stuck up on him and she thought about him a lot, but she was actively seeing him. I mean, it was all just so unfair to me. Why did she marry me if she wanted to be with him so bad? Right since our freaking honeymoon. The more I read those texts, all the more angry I felt, and I wanted to wake her up and scream at her and ask her for answers. But I knew it was far too late for that, and I had to end our marriage, and it was a good thing that we had signed a prenup. But I did not know that we would ever have the need for it, you know. This woman had messed up my life so massively, all for a man who had treated her so poor. But I guess some people just can't be saved. They only chase what's bad for them. Well, all of my doubts were gone, and I was seeing everything crystal clear now. The only problem was that to reinforce the prenup, I needed to show proof that she had been cheating on me. But I could not show their messages because that could also backfire at me because I was invading her privacy, which is also an offense. I didn't want to take any risk in the slightest when it came to the prenup. I was not going to let her ruin my life even more. So now, friends, I've thought about this for well over a week, and I have come up with a plan, you know, a week from now. I'm going to tell Sophia that I have to go to the station for work for a few weeks, and she still will think that it's such a perfect opportunity for her and Sam to go about their business and meet at our home. But I'll not actually be going to that station, you know. I'll let them believe I'm going, but I'll actually collect proof of Sophia cheating. I need to do a lot of planning, I mean, to how I'm going to do that, and it'll be great if you guys can give me just a few suggestions, please. Negative comments, number one, on the original post, it says, Do you really think it's worth all the trouble, OP? You have a problem with the fact that she was lying to you, and now you're lying to her as well. How are you any different from her? I get it, you're doing it to protect yourself, but I'm sure there's better ways to deal with this. All the lying and spying seems a bit too much to me, not to mention the hundreds of ways in which it could have gone wrong. Updates, number one. Hey, friends, it's been an extremely intense couple of months, and I thought the worst things would have happened to me with finding out Sophia's been cheating on me since we got married, but I could not even have imagined what all came next. Also, thank you so much to all the people who showed their support and gave really helpful suggestions, but I still wanted to clarify that you can't say what I did was exactly lying. How else was I supposed to collect proof for the prenup that she was cheating? Did you just expect me to do nothing? She was lying knowing that it was wrong and disloyal. And I lied to protect myself from her. There's a difference. But anyways, the last thing you all know is that I was planning to collect some proof. So after a few days of planning, I left the house after telling her that I was going on the business trip. I went up to the rooftop of the abandoned house right in front of ours. Nah. Fifteen minutes after I left, I saw Sam enter the house. Fifteen minutes is all it took. Well, but there was a lot of trees in the way because of which I could not get a clear shot of him entering. 
And even if I did, I don't think that would have been incriminating enough. So I had to give it a few days before I got the perfect chance and spotted them at a restaurant together. And I took so many pictures of them and all of them are saved to my phone. Although having followed them for weeks, it was really heartbreaking for me to see that she didn't care about me one bit. She was calling me, straight up telling me lies about what she did throughout the day. There was a time when she lied about being at the grocery store when I literally saw them together at a bar at the same time. It made me wonder how many other times she had lied to me like this. But that was not all. In trying to find proof, I accidentally found out something else which could have completely ruined Sophia's life. I needed to be 100% sure about it before I can tell you what it is. So... Almost after a month, I came back to the house, and when I entered the home, Sophia opened up the door, and she was all dressed up, and she had makeup on, and she was treating me as if I, it was a special day of some kind, and I was very confused. She served me a nice hot coffee and made a smile on her face the entire time. It, I asked her, what's going on? She said that she had something to tell me and that I was not ready to hear it. Little did I know that I had heard and seen a lot of stuff I wasn't ready to see in the last few months. Ugh. Well, I'm pregnant, Sean. What? Well, for a few seconds, I was blank, and I had no idea what to even think, let alone to respond to that. Where did that even come from? That is why she had gotten already dressed up, so she would give me the good news, only I couldn't tell if it was good or bad, because what if the child isn't mine? That was a very real possibility, and I could not think straight. I was in complete disbelief that this woman could really stoop that low. I was 100% sure that the baby wasn't mine. And uh, she had the audacity to even lie about such a big thing, telling me that it's my baby. I couldn't believe that she could be so cruel as to play with my sentiments like that. If I had not known about all of her other huge lies, I would have believed her. And I don't know how long I would have gone believing this lie. You know, at this point, I was sure that I had married a bat-crap crazy psychotic person. I asked her all the details of everything else about when she found out, and I told her that I wanted to do a DNA test. The fake smile on her face instantly vanished, and I could tell that she was suddenly scared and anxious. After this, we had a whole argument where she kept trying to convince me not to get the DNA test, making accusations like I didn't trust her. Well, the guts on this woman. But I was not going to let it slide. If she had not told me about the pregnancy, I would have told her right then and there. And then that I knew she was cheating on me. But after the DNA test, I knew I would have a solid, tangible proof which she could not deny. The argument ended with me saying that she's going to get a DNA test after completing 10 weeks of her pregnancy. So weeks passed by and Sophia began to grow more anxious. Her calls and texts with Sam had increased, trying to figure out how to evade this, but this wasn't going to happen. After a point, even I had forgotten about it, but luckily I had set a reminder in my phone two days before she would complete the 10 weeks. So today's the day. And uh, the reminder also reminded me that I had not updated you all on what was going on. The DNA test is in two days, and I simply cannot wait. I know that she'll resist a lot, and I'm sure that we'll have another fight. I'm just worried about how will I get her to the hospital with all her opposition. Do you guys know if somehow the procedure can happen at home or something? Or some other way, I would have appreciated your suggestions, you know. Update number two. Hello everyone, I'm sorry it took me so long to write this update and I've had way too much on my plate for the last six months. I think for three to four days after I wrote the update, Sophia and I had a very huge argument that went on for, what, two days? Where she was trying her best to avoid the DNA test. But after a lot of screaming and anger, she had no choice in the end but to give in. She was extremely reluctant to go and had a constant look of anxiety and fear upon her face. And I mean it, straight up fear. Well, the test happened and I was right. It was Sam's baby. The moment the test report came, Sophia broke down hysterically crying and hyperventilating, but it was impossible for me to show any sympathy towards this woman. She broke my heart and lied to me, and now that her truth was out, what else could she do but cry? Well, I told her everything, that I had known that she had been cheating on me for years and that I was just waiting to gather evidence for the prenup. 
At first, she begged and apologized to me and tried to stop me from divorcing her. And then she just started shouting like a mad person. She called Sam in front of me and started crying to him as well, but I couldn't care less. I was prepared for this. In the next few weeks to come, I found a lawyer and prepared for all the specifics of the divorce. And then I filed for the divorce, and it's been a few months since our court hearings began. I asked Sophia to move out, but she won't. She kept saying that we have not been divorced yet and that I have no right to kick her out. It's been a rampage living with her for the last few months, and she also has reduced seeing time with Sam a lot. As if now, that's what's going to do her any good. I mean, come on. She's been literally carrying his baby. If I would have told her what I found out in those weeks of looking for evidence, she would have lost her mind. The divorce and prenup were finalized and cleared out by the court last week, and Sophia was given a time of 15 days. 15 days to leave my house and move to a new place. She's been staying with Sam since then, which is ironic because her entire family lives in Boston. But I'm extremely satisfied and relieved now that she's not part of my life, and that I was able to leave the marriage without many problems. Although it'll still take some time to process everything that's happened in the last few months, but another issue now is that every time Sophia comes to the house to pack her stuff and everything else, we have a fight. Is there any way to avoid this, guys? I can't take so much mental stress anymore after everything I went through. How do I deal with this? Ugh. Update number three. This is the final update of the story. Hey guys, well, I'm back. It's been four months since my last update, and I'm back again with some very shocking news for everybody. The last time I wrote an update, I thought it was going to be my last, but things turned out to be a lot more different. And a lot more chaotic. I don't know if you all remember that months ago, I was collecting evidence to prove Sophia's infidelity. I said that I found out something really interesting and unexpected, which had the potential to ruin Sophia's life. If I'm being honest, I have forgotten about it myself in the chaos of the divorce, until it was Sophia's last day at my house. So, like I told you, every time she was at the house, we were getting into very heated arguments about the one thing or the other. Well, right before one of the arguments, I was clearing out extra photos from my home because my storage was full. And while clearing it out, I saw a picture I took almost a year back in which Sam was getting really cozy and comfortable with some girl at the pool. I'd gone to the community pool that day and happened to spot him there accidentally, but he was there with a girl, and since I was, anyways, clicking a lot of pictures for evidence that day, I took some photos too because clearly he was with some girl other than Sophia, which means that he had been cheating on Sophia again all this time, but I had to be sure before I ever accused him of doing such a thing. Now, the one thing that works to my benefit in this entire scenario is that the girl Sam was with is my colleague. So I asked her about Sam, and she told me that they've been seeing each other for months and that they met on a dating app. Sam was on a dating app, huh? Which means that he had been actively seeing other people while he was with my wife. That is who Sophia had decided to ruin our marriage for, by the way. But hey, I think as months passed by, I forgot to tell Sophia, and now I was sitting on the couch when she was wrapping up her hands and things for one final time. And she taunted me on how I could at least help her with the packing, but I didn't understand why she would expect me to do that. I mean, I didn't owe her anything, and I told her exactly the same. She started saying things like how I was such a lazy man who was good for nothing and that it was good for the divorce happening so she could finally live with Sam. And that he had all the qualities that I lacked, including trustworthiness and loyalty? <laughs> Well, at this point, I was so frustrated that I just blurted out the truth about Sam to her, and I told her that Sam's been cheating on her. I showed her his dating profile and the pictures I took of her and my co-worker. I told her everything about how she thought he was loyal. Meanwhile, he was going out with multiple people just like he had been doing when they were together. I said that it was good riddance for me that she's finally out of my life because she deserves somebody like Sam, who was as disloyal to her as she was to me. After this, she said I was wrong and there was nothing I could say to stop her from having a happy life with Sam. I just laughed it off and shut the door on her way out. After that, I could not believe how much better and peaceful my life has gotten. I was going about my daily routine, meeting new people, but after a few weeks of this silence, Sophia 
shows up at my house again crying and screaming. She had finally come to her senses and realized that Sam had a bad, toxic guy inside of him. She was at my door expecting me to take her back because she had nowhere to go and she went on and on about how sorry she was and she regretted the fact that she ruined our marriage. But I said that there was no universe in which I would forgive her, alone take her back. After all the mental, emotional, and financial stress that she caused me, all because of this stupid enough person to ruin our marriage for some dumb guy who didn't even one bit care about her. <laughs> she begged. She apologized. And even more, but it was not because of Sam that she ended up here. It was because of herself. She was the one who was married and still decided to constantly cheat and then go ahead and lie about how she was pregnant with my baby. No matter how much she apologized or painted herself as the victim, she was not. It was time that she paid for the massive amount of pain that she had put me through, being so utterly selfish and ruthless. I kicked her out and asked her to never come back again because I was done with dealing with her crap, and if she ever dared to call or text me or show up at my house again, I would not hesitate to get her a restraining order. And that's it, friends. I went through a lot of emotional turmoil because of her, but now I'm finally free. Top comment from the final update, it states this. Well, I agree that she's a bad person, but she's pregnant. I really don't think you should have kicked her out like that when she showed up at your door in such a desperate state. Do you have any idea how difficult pregnancy is? What she did was wrong, but you could have still kept her in your house for a few days before she could have found another solution to all this. It makes me so worried for her. I mean, I don't know what this girl was thinking. Sean, aka the OP, it was pretty obvious he was done. I mean, what she did was so stupid and toxic, she ruined her entire marriage for a man that had already cheated on her in the past, already was proven to be untrustworthy, and then she goes out and says, oh no, this is the most trustworthy man I've ever met. Way more trustworthy than you, OP. Oh yeah, well if that's so, why is he still cheating on women with you? It just... It blew my mind how oblivious she was, and I do want to know your thoughts. Maybe somebody in the comment section has been in this situation before. Let me know about it, guys. Drop it down below. My name's Mr. Redito. I narrate stories like this every single day. And if you want to be a part of these daily internet readings, all you got to do is hit that subscribe button, guys. Have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow. And of course, remember, it's cool to be kind. Peace.